One way where it's really easy to see that is if you hit the Y key, now we're in transpose. And basically if you hit Y, you're gonna see it's gonna to toggle off this right here. And if you hover over it, you're gonna see the hotkey for that is Y and it's gonna go Gizmo 3D to transpose essentially. So hit Y and now we're in transpose mode. So transpose is the original way you used to have to move things in ZBrush. The functionality is pretty basic, and this is where move, scale, and rotate comes into play. If you remember, if you hit Y and go back into Gizmo, it doesn't matter which one you have selected, you can rotate, move, and scale all at the same time, even though we have rotate selected. However, if we hit Y, and then we have rotate selected, and you grab the inside, so you have three orange balls on the outside, and on the inside, there's a red, white, and another red one here. So if you grab this inside red one and drag, you're going to see it's only going to rotate. If you hit E or go to scale up here and you grab this one, you're going to see it's going to scale. And you go into move and grab this red one, it's actually going to look like it scales, but actually that's just part of the move component. If you grab this middle one here, the middle white ball in the middle, uh, that'll, that'll move. So you can see move, scale, and rotate plays a big role in how transpose works. Now, similar to gizmo functionality, uh, you can just tap on your object and it'll go ahead and inherit that surface normal. So if I tap on this uh, right here, it's gonna shoot straight out from that normal direction. If I tap on the top here, it's gonna shoot straight up. You know, it's, it's inheriting that direction. Now, if I hold down shift and snap it to the side, you'll see this is a little askew. Like if I, if I choose like, oh, I wanna go down the x-axis, the z-axis, it's kind of off a little bit. How you can reset that is literally just to go and click and drag with your transpose line and just snap between these two points. You know, these are a planar direction. So now when I hold down shift, z is gonna go straight up, x is gonna go straight to the side of that direction, and you're good to go. So if I go here and I tap z now, it's going to flip that direction here, and now I can move along this axis here. So let's talk about the basics of transpose line. So again, you can click and drag and you can snap between two points. And essentially what you're doing is when you click and then drag out, this first point is gonna be your anchor point. And then you can either snap to a, a component here, in this case a vert, or you can drag off and it'll just drag straight off. So one easy way is if you wanna make a straight line across here, uh, you can go through here and you can snap or you can just drag, keep dragging off and hold down shift and that'll snap this to a straight line. You're gonna see it's gonna snap in increments. So if you just tap on an object and hold down shift and drag off, you can just drag a straight line right off of that object. Same thing on the side here. It'll try and snap to all these points or you can just hold down shift and drag straight off and that'll give you a straight line. So again, just really quickly, you can use this and hold down shift and drag a straight line off and then how you move your pivot here. So this is the anchor pivot. And again, if we move and we grab this middle inside ball, it'll move from there, or more obviously, let's choose rotate. And we grab this outside ball, it'll rotate right where that pivot point is. So again, if we tap here and set our anchor pivot point, and hold down shift and just drag straight off and then rotate, it'll just rotate around that pivot. So that's a really easy way if you wanna rotate from this point, just click and drag straight off and now you can rotate in this direction or hold down shift and snap your camera and then rotate in this direction. But let's work our way down the line. So let's go back to move here. So again, if we just tap on our object, if we grab this outer orange ring, that's gonna move your transpose line itself. So this outer orange ring will still be anchored here. So we can just go ahead and move this anchor. And again, if you hold down shift, it'll snap to increments. So you can hold down shift and snap it straight up if you want. This outside middle one, will allow you to move the entire transpose line. Or again, uh, if you hold down shift, it'll try to snap to increments, but it's probably not gonna do you much good. If you grab this outside bottom one, this is your anchor point. So now you can reset this anchor to wherever you'd like. If you set it down here, that's where it'll rotate from, for example. Now I'll admit, move is a little bit weird. So if we go through here and we tap on this object and we have an orange line straight out, and again, this is our anchor point here, and we hit W. If I grab this outside one here, it's actually gonna do a non-uniform scale. Now, technically what it's doing is anchoring this geometry and moving the rest of the geometry away from that point. So it is a move operation. It just behaves like a non-uniform scale. Uh, if I wanna constrain it to an axis, right now if I just grab this one and move it, it's gonna not be constrained to an axis, so it's hard to get it to like, you know, non-uniformly scale along this pivot this transpose line, you can hold down shift and now you can non-uniformly scale it down the axis. 
and then you can go over here to the Z, hold down shift, and you can scale it non-uniformly this way, or X and non-uniformly scale it this way. So let's go ahead and just tap on the top here, and that's grabbing this inside out line here. If we grab this middle one with move selected, that's gonna move the entire object. And again, you can move it on any axis. You can just switch over here to the X axis and hold down shift, and it'll move it right along that axis, or the Z axis, hold down shift, move along the Z axis. Or if you don't want to be constrained to an axis, just grab this middle one and just move it wherever you'd like. And then you can tap to recenter your pivot. If we grab this bottom one with move, that's going to run a clip operation. So kind of like when we hit Y and we use the gizmo and then hold down control to do a clip operation. Hit Y again, and if you use this, this is doing the same thing. So generally speaking, what I'll do if I'm using the transpose line is I hit W, I'll do a non-uniform scale and hold down shift from that anchor point, or I'll move my entire object, or I'll hold down control and drag along the topology of my object, and then I can move this pivot point here, this anchor pivot, hold down shift, snap this here, and if I switch over here to, or if I use move now, I can move to the rest of these points uh, where they need to go. Scale is another uh, weird one. Rotate is probably the most straightforward. Uh, if we use scale, let's go ahead and control drag to unmask. We'll go ahead and tap here to reset. If I grab this outer orange one, that's going to go ahead and do a uniform scale, which is probably what I'll use. I'll use this for a uniform scale, and then I'll hit W and use this for a non-uniform scale. Uh, if I go back into E, which is scale mode, and I grab this middle one, this is going to scale kind of along those two axes, and if I grab this anchor point here, that's going to scale from that top pivot. So again, generally speaking, what I'll do is I'll use this scale for a uniform scale, and then I'll hit W for a non-uniform scale, or to move along an axis. Rotate, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you go ahead and again, just, just tap on the top of here, and then this is gonna be our anchor point. So if I rotate now, it's gonna rotate from that anchor point using this as my axis. Again, that's this inside outer circle. If I grab this middle one, it's going to rotate along the long axis here, so I can kind of rotate around the middle. So again, this rotates on the outside, and just like anything else, if you hold down shift, that'll snap to increments, so 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. And then here is going to rotate around the long axis, and again, if we go move our camera, you're going to see that there's the rotation there. And then this bottom one here will rotate around this as the anchor. Again, maybe not so useful, but it's there if you need it. Now if we hit W to go back into move mode, and in fact, uh, let's go back to that demo soldier, or if you don't have it, hit the comma key, go to your tool menu, double click on this demo soldier, and that'll pull it up in your inter interface. And just like we were doing with the gizmo, if you hit W and we have transpose, in fact, you can hit X to go across X symmetry, and then you can control drag down your object. That'll go ahead and mask all the way down to the elbow here. Now, if I'm gonna use transpose to pose, I can click on the elbow and then click on the wrist. And that'll be two pivot points here. And in fact, I can grab this outer orange circle and move the whole thing in. So I can treat this, these outer orange circles like bones. I can kind of reposition these things where the bones might be. And now if I hit R to rotate, I can. I know this is my pivot point, my anchor. I can grab this outside one, and I can usually use this like a bone system. Just kind of go through here and rotate in like so. Now again, I can hold down Control and Mask, or sometimes if it's easier, just Control Unmask. Go in here to Control Mask Lasso, and then you can literally just mask where you need to mask, or in our case, Control Drag to Unmask, Control Alt to unmask just the hands. Let's go back in here and I can just tap on here now and if I do rotate, I know that's my anchor point. So now I can use this rotation to go through here and rotate and I can also set this pivot point to be a little further in. So now when I rotate, it'll rotate from wherever this anchor point axis is. And again, uh, going through here and holding down the outer orange circle moves the pivot and then the inside circles are going to rotate around that pivot. Now, if we choose a Cylinder 3D, make PolyMesh 3D, and let's go back down here to our 
polygroups and let's do group by normals. So now if I hit W and we still have transpose, I can control tap this and it's going to select that polygroup. Same thing as if we hit Y and we're in gizmo mode. If I control tap any polygroup, it'll go ahead and unmask that polygroup. It's also kind of blurring my mask. So just control drag out here and then control tap this polygroup to, um, ah, doesn't seem to want to be uh, selecting this polygroup. If that's the case, control shift tap this polygroup, control tap to mask it, control shift tap to bring everything else back, and now control tap to invert that mask. And this should just mask this polygroup here. But anyway, if we control tap this top polygroup here, and I hold down control and move along here, it's going to uh, make a new edge loop and then control drag again. I can let go of everything and then control drag again or control drag out and let go of control and just continue to drag out more edge loops. You can do the exact same thing with transpose. So if I hit Y, we got a transpose line. I control tap this poly group here. I can hold down control with move and I can drag out more poly loops and hold down control shift to go ahead and just drag out more edge loops. Now there's something cool that transpose can do that gizmo can't and that's using scale to inset edge rings. So again, if I'm tapped off over here, I control tap this poly group here that I'll unmask just this poly group. And now I have a hit E for scale and hold down control and drag this inside one in. It'll go ahead and bring in an edge ring. So you can hold down control and bring this in and then W to move this out, control. Let's go ahead and reset here. So I'll just tap here and then hold down, uh, go back into scale mode. And then hold down control and drag this in, control drag in another edge ring, hit W and move this in. Now you're gonna have this functionality when we get to Z modeler. So don't feel like you have to use transpose to do that. This is just something interesting that transpose can do. Another interesting thing is we hold down control and drag, we'll just go ahead and mask this out. And then we'll control drag a line along our object here. If we're in move mode and we hold down alt along these, you can actually bend along here. Same thing with this middle one. You can actually bend in here. And then of course, if you hold down alt here, it's gonna to wanna to clip this object down where it's unmasked. But uh, usually I'll use these to kind of maybe bend a little bit. And this is using a move by the way. So hold down alt and you can bend the geo as needed. That can come in handy sometimes. Uh, of course, if you hit R to go to rotate and then you just drag this around. Now you can use this to bend around that pivot point. However, in rotate, if you hold down alt, you can actually bend from this pivot point. And of course we have this mass down here, so it's not gonna change anything. And it'll kind of do uh, a twist on your object here. So if we go through here and we say, tap here for your transpose line and then move this transpose line down then alt drag, you can actually use this to twist. Again, you can also just hit Y to go back into gizmo mode, go to unmash mesh center, reset orient, axis orientation, and twist in here where you can control mask, which you don't want. So again, you can still go through here and twist as needed, but that's also extra functionality when you have gizmo is holding down alt with rotate it'll rotate just right around this point. Or if you don't hold down Alt, it'll go ahead and rotate down the Z axis as well. So holding down Alt with rotate kind of resets where you're rotating from. And it'll provide a little bit more of a fall off as opposed to just rotating from these points will provide no fall off. Now, generally speaking, I use Gizmo for almost everything. The only exception for that really is if I go through here and I choose a geometry, just turn on DynaMesh, and then I, you know if you hold down Control and you go in here to Mask Rectangle and you put in an alpha, and you can drag out a star here and you can kind of position the star. You can also do something with, hit B, T, S, that's Transpose Smart Mask. So now when I use my transpose line and I hold down control, number one, it'll actually mask along your surface here. So it'll actually stop along the edges. So that's one use of the transpose smart mask if you don't want to use your depth masking. Another use is if you go through here and you put in an alpha, 
you can hold down control and it'll start masking and you can actually use this to go through and move scale and rotate your mask around so it's a little bit more flexible than say going in here to mask rectangle let's say Q to go back into draw mode go back in here to mask rectangle with this so you can't rotate it you can move it and you can make the scale larger or smaller but you can't rotate whereas in if we hit W to go back into smash transpose smart mask you can mask and rotate and scale so if that's useful for for you uh, that's another reason why you might want to use transpose but again that's BT transpose smart mask so let's go ahead and control drag and in fact let's go to BT just go back here to regular trans transpose BTR so again, you have transpose, which you can use to do all sorts of cool things. And then you can hit Y to switch back to gizmo and you're back in gizmo mode. Now you're going to see when I did that, if I hit Y, you're going to see, oh, my transpose line set that gizmo. Let's drag this back to where we just had a regular cylinder here. And we can use this to our advantage too. If you ever need a very precise gizmo axis orientation, if we hit Y right now, you're going to see it'll inherit where you set your pivot point. So Again, Y, you can tap, set your transpose line, and you can actually, again with your transpose, you can click this point, and then click this point, and then if you hit Y to switch to gizmo, it'll go in and inherit that axis. So that could be another really useful thing. If you want something precisely snap between two points, again, just hit Y, use your transpose line to snap your anchor and your endpoint to that line, and then when you hit Y again, your gizmo will be right along that axis. In fact, if you hit Y, you're gonna see you have uh, this white dot out here. If you hover over this, you're gonna see uh, click to reposition and shift to align. You can also control tap that. So if you want to rotate your camera to a very specific point, just hold down control and tap and that'll rotate your actual object. It's a little bit difficult to see uh, in this example, but if we choose this demo soldier here, and it's like, I wanna put this arm straight in my camera. And it's like, well, I can kind of move this arm around and kind of straighten it out a little bit. But if I grab my transpose line, and this is the straight line, you know, shoulder to elbow, and I wanna make this straight on my camera view, hold down control and tap that white dot and you're gonna see it's gonna move my camera, so now this line is straight in my camera. It didn't rotate the actual object, it just rotated the camera to that position. Speaking of rotating a camera, if I hit W and Y, so we're back to our gizmo here, you're gonna see we're automatically moving in X, Y, and Z. You can go over here and choose Y and just rotate in the Y direction or Z to rotate in the Z direction, or you can say X, Y, Z, hold down shift and start rotating and then let go of shift and that'll also rotate in your Z direction. So again, hold down shift, start rotating, let go of shift and that'll rotate your object. Let's go to unmash mesh center here. You're also gonna see when we go to unmash mesh center, it goes across our axis. So if we go out of solo mode here and we alt tap our wristbands and we go to unmash mesh center and we have X symmetry turned on, you're gonna see this object over here has a center mass and this object over here has a center mass. If we wanna choose the area between these two objects, turn off X symmetry by tapping X, and again, transform, activate symmetry is off. Now when I go to unmatch mesh center, it'll go to the middle of these objects, and then I tap X to turn X symmetry back on. So this will allow me X symmetry, center, or I can go to Unmatch Mesh Center and grab uh, these and rotate them along their own local axis. Speaking of local axis, there's your L-SIM local symmetry right here. Uh, if I go out of solo mode here and I start scaling this, uh, if I go to uniform scale, you're gonna see it's gonna scale away from the world axis and towards the world axis. To avoid doing that, go over here and turn on L-SIM, and now it's gonna use that local axis over here so I can scale uh, uniformly, again, along that object's local axis.